This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 7 and 8. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. Before I get started, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham Hamashiach Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rachaha Kodash. All right, that's who this world ignorantly and incorrectly calls God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in the ancient Paleo Hebrew language. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone, of whom I learned this 100% truth, and who rule very well and oversee the tabernacle of David. Shout out to the head of the men of Israel camp, the Achazak, whom I teach under here in Greenville, South Carolina. And finally, a quick shout out as well to you, Achyam and Achwath, which is also Hebrew for you brethren and sisters who are diligently and sincerely working out your faith in these last days with fear and trembling towards your salvation. And to y'all, I say Shalom. This is the Ach Alaya, the brother Elijah. And I'm here with a quick exhortation through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai in these last days for the edification of the elect, right? Which the elect are the chosen Israelites. And the Israelites today are going by by words, uh, for example, the so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, right? You know, Abarat is Lord willing, this is edifying unto the elect. So, once again, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 54. And. Once again, really, I recommend reading this entire chapter, the chapter in its entirety. For the point and for the context, we could have started at verse 4. Um, but I did want to just get straight to the, the point of this exhortation, uh, which is in verse 7 and 8. And like, I, and I'm actually, we're going to end up reading um, 9 and 10 as well. Uh, but yeah, without too much else to say, let's go and hop right back into the scriptures. And, and I don't want to write this out, Lord willing, this is edifying. All right, Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 7. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. Now, a lot of people, especially a lot of Christianity believers, might hear verses like this. And, you know, they might get a false sense of comfort and a false sense of relief because uh, they begin to think that this is talking about them, that this actually applies to them, which is kind of uh, not even kind of, which is very ridiculous, you know, um, to just pick up. A, a random piece of literature or, you know, a, a, a random nation's heritage uh, in a book of their, you know, records and to automatically assume that what they're talking about has anything to do with you. For one, that shows a level of pride on, you know, on their behalf, on your behalf, if you might have been under that thought process, you know, but really, you know, when you get some understanding, you know, because as the scriptures say, with all thy getting, get understanding. Once you get some understanding of these verses that you read, you start to realize just how much is not actually talking about you or even more so um, the majority of the inhabitants of the earth. Right. It's actually talking about the Israelites. Right. Which, once again, are you so-called black, Hispanic, Native American Indians. Right. And it says that up earlier in the chapter, you know, even in verse five, you know, it mentions the thy redeemer, the holy one of Israel. You know, so we understand, you know, the people. Uh, that are being referred to within context, the Israelites. And once again, it says, Isaiah 54 and 7, for a small moment have I forsaken thee. So the God of the Israelites, the Redeemer of the Israelites, Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, even, you know, for you non-believers out there, that is his name, uh, he, he has acknowledged through his, his prophets, through his servants, the men of the Lord, he's acknowledged that he has forsaken us, you know, but it wasn't him that forsook us first. You know, those of y'all who you know, are familiar with the scriptures, with the history of the Israelites, you are aware that they actually forsook the Heavenly Father first. You know, they entered into a, a, a blood covenant, you know, a sacrificial covenant, you know, even a righteous and holy law agreement with the Heavenly Father that they would do all of, of his charges, all of his commandments, you know, and then they forsook them after entering into that covenant. So the Lord forsook them right back. You know, he was like, look, if you're not going to hold up your end of the deal, you know, then there's no point in, of him holding up his, you know. So in the scriptures that we're reading, the Heavenly Father is acknowledging that for a small moment have I forsaken thee. And why does, why is it known as a small moment? You know, just to edify on that point, because when you look at 
let's even just say it's been 2,000 years since the Lord Yahweh Shai died. So let's deal with that. A lot of people might say 2,000 years is a long time. W where is the Lord? You know, what is he doing? Why hasn't he returned yet? Well, really, what what are 2,000 years compared to eternity? You know, when you think about, you know, uh, the, the time period and the time frame in which the Heavenly Father said he would deal and be amongst his people, the Israelites. That's nothing. That's a small moment compared to eternity, man. 2,000 years, you know, and even in the Lord's time, you know, according to, uh, I believe, what is that, First Peter? Uh, one day to the Lord is a thousand of our years, right? Uh, let me see if I can spell it All right. Uh, oh, 2 Peter 3 and 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day, right? So even to the Heavenly Father, you know, uh, in regards to sending his son back to the earth, although it's been 2,000 years for us, it's only been two days to the Heavenly Father. He hasn't forgotten what his son had to endure. He hasn't forgotten what his son had to suffer, you know, and, and even he hasn't forgotten the inheritance that he promised his son, that he's even bestowed upon his son and promised his son, you know, to inherit the earth as his, you know. He hasn't forgotten that. It's only been two days to the Lord, you know. So, once again, the time frame that we're living in, um, which, you know, the scriptures even call Jeremiah 30 and 7, the time of Jacob's trouble, you know, because uh, Jacob's trouble, the trouble of the Israelites, is it's really about to reach its climax, you know, here in America, especially Babylon the Great, according to the scriptures. Uh, the Lord is about to release, uh, you know, <laughs> judgments, man, really, really harsh judgments. But it's, it's due to the rebellion and disobedience of, of his people. You know, the two thirds of the nation of Israel, even as the book of Zechariah chapter 13 goes into, you know, two thirds of the Lord's own people uh, that have been uh, allotted and set up from the foundation of the world to be destroyed here in America, in Babylon the Great, you know, due to their rebellion and, and, and unbelief. You know, in, in the prophecies and, and in the Lord's word, you know, and once again, the scripture says for a small moment, have I forsaken thee? Because, you know, in the kingdom, we're going to look back at this time and be like, man, you know, that was nothing. You know, why were we worried? And I say this uh, in regards to the elect, to the chosen, the Israelites who do have faith, those of us who are enduring to make our calling and election sure. You know, we're going to look back, Lord willing, you know, I don't want to I'd be a part of that number. We're going to look back. And, and we're going to say, you yeah, man, that was nothing. We'll, we'll go through all that all over again just to receive this great inheritance. And that's what the scripture goes into. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. And that great mercy, it, it starts chiefly with the author and finisher of our faith, the Lord Yahweh Shai. You know, as he is the, the, the literal mercy seat for us, for those of y'all who can't receive it. You know, being the atonement. You know, we just had the day of atonement a few days ago. Uh, him even being the atonement for us, you know, for the remission of our sins, you know, to forgive us of our transgressions under that first covenant. He has been made the mediator, as, you know, the book of Hebrews goes into. He's been established as the mediator, you know, the forerunner uh, of the New Testament, you know, and, uh, wherein the Israelites will be righteous. We'll be able to uphold our end of the deal, you know, by the spirit of Yahweh living within us. You know, but conti continuing on, uh, oh, and I will add this too as well. The great mercy is going into the uh, the salvation and deliverance from that second death that the book of Re Revelation talks about. The uh, second Peter chapter three goes into it as well. Uh, um, when the, the, the heaven shall melt with fervent heat, you know, and all the elements shall melt. That's going into the thermonuclear fire. That's been pronounced to come upon Babylon the Great, a.k.a. Um, America, you know, in World War Three. That's the climax. That's the, the ending result of all these wars and rumors of wars and uproars of the people. You know, that's that's what all this is leading up to. The great whore, <laughs> America, being destroyed with thermonuclear fire. The elect are going to receive the sure mercies of David, the great mercies of Yahweh Bashim and they're going to be gathered up pursuant to Matthew chapter 24. The Lord Yahweh Shah is going to come to the earth at the command of his heavenly father, our heavenly father, Yahweh, and he's going to gather up his elect, the chosen Israelites, from wherever they be scattered in the earth, even chiefly America. It says in verse 8, Isaiah 54 and 8, And a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, 
but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, thy Redeemer. Right? And this is what our whole faith, you know, uh, tells us. It, it brings us comfort and reminds us that the Heavenly Father Yahweh, he doesn't change, you know? What is that? Uh, what is that? Malachi 3? The Heavenly Father doesn't change. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Malachi 3 and 6, you know? I am the Lord Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. You know, consumed by what? The scripture, I believe in this very same chapter, the scriptures tell us, you know, that there are weapons that have been formed against us. You know, Esau Edom being the literal sword of, of the Lord. Esau Edom being the biblical name and nationality for the so-called white men, women, and children. You know, and then the Lord also created, you know, tools and weaponry. Uh, that he's given them access to use to, to physically destroy us and to kill us, you know, whether that even be going into, you know, the literal gun, you know, the modern day sword, or even it's uh, their philosophies, their religions, you know, being some of the main stumbling blocks for our people, Christianity, you know, Islam, Buddhism, you know, and whatever other philosophy and religion and doctrine that springs forth that goes against the faith of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, those are weapons that, are, that have been formed against us to ultimately have us consumed before our God. You know, but the Heavenly Father has set up an elect, you know, a chosen of the chosen, you know, um, that he set up to, to receive his mercy, you know, to, uh, to show how great of a redemptive power he actually has to those who love him and those who fear him, you know. Matter of fact, let, let's grab some of that. We're going to come back to Isaiah 54, right? Um, This is the book of Psalms. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and grab it real quick. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 103. And just to get straight to the point, uh, let's get verse 17 and 18. It says, Psalm, the uh, 103rd Psalm, and verse 17. But the mercy of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is is from everlasting to everlasting. So even from the beginning, you know, even before the beginning, because the Heavenly Father has no beginning nor end. He's always purposed mercy for what? As it says, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children. So not only just those that fear him. But even the descendants of those that fear him, the Lord has mercy towards them. You know, so guess who that starts with? You know, uh, Abraham, you know, trickled down to Isaac and trickled down to Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. And then his 12 sons who became, you know, great, a great nation, the 12 tribes of Israel. Guess what? The Lord's mercy is towards them, but not even just all of them, especially in these times now, is upon them that actually fear him and walk in his ways. As it says in verse 18, to such as keep his covenant. This is what it means to fear the Lord. To such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. Right? Because you have a lot of Israelites and not just Israelites only. But you got a lot of other nations that will even acknowledge that the God of the Israelites has particular commandments. A particular set of laws, statutes, and judgments that they are to keep and to do. But only the chosen Israelites are going to actually do them. Through that Rakhakwadash, through that Holy Spirit. You know, which once again is is uh the remembrance given, you know, by the Lord's ministers, you know, the, the angels, for those of y'all who can receive it, you know, at the command of the Lord Yahweh Shah, he sends his angels to give us remembrance of the law. You know, as it says, what is that in the book of Acts, chapter five, I believe, where it says, and have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it, you know. That's talking about the Israelites, you know, but those are the Israelites who do fear the Lord, you know, they're going to keep his covenant. And that's not just talking about the old covenant, man. It's not saying you got to keep all 613 laws in order for the Lord to show his mercy to you. It's talking about those who return unto the Lord in sincerity and in truth, even acknowledging the the Lord's son, our Lord, Adawan Yahweh Shai, you know, the only begotten son of the heavenly father, Yahweh. You know, we have to acknowledge him as well. Because as the Lord Yahweh Shai told us, uh, no man can cometh unto the Father but by me, you know. And even another another place, I believe the Lord Yahweh Shai said, um, uh, draw him. Let me see. Set. 
John 6 and 44, the Lord Yahweh Shai said, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. You know, so you see it's a package deal. You can't have the Son without the Father. You can't have the Father without the Son. And you can't even receive the Son except the Father which has sent the Son draws you, right? If we go to uh, John 6 and 44 really quick, and we get that word draw, I want to get this because it, it emphasizes the point on this is it doesn't matter if you want to be chosen or not it's not up to you right no man john 6 and 44 no man can come to me except the father which has sent me draw him and i will raise him up at the last day and the last day is talking about that great destruction right before you know or right as you know simultaneously as babylon the great is receiving its judgment the end of this world and then the beginning of the next, the Lord Yahweh Shai said he's going to raise up the elect at that last day. You know, the, the word right here for drag, I mean for draw, it's like it, is Elko. I'll play it. Strong's G, 1670, Helco. Helco. Right, which means to draw, to drag off. You know, so the Lord Yahweh has to drag you off from this wicked world, from all those wicked uh things that you used to do in the world from the from the, the world of darkness and from following the god of this world and he's gonna draw you to his son to behold that glorious light you know and to understand this gospel and be converted and to believe right as it says in the strong definition uh to drag to draw you know which means to bring near to draw closer to you know and that's what the heavenly father is doing through the holy spirit causing us to acknowledge his son which is going to cause us to remember the heavenly father and return unto his covenant right which is not just the old covenant you know which reminds me about that initial point i was making it's also to acknowledge the new covenant right the book of hebrews tells us that matter of fact uh lord yahweh shall be in uh the minister of a better covenant here we go let's just get verse six hebrews eight and six but now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry. It's talking about the Lord Yahweh Shai. By how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. And what are those better promises? That the Israelites are no longer going to transgress and commit sins and forsake the Lord. They're going to always be with the Lord, married unto him, performing all, you know, their parts of the oath. Being obedient to all the law, statutes, and commandments, Right. As it says, I'll jump down to verse 8. Oh, actually, we read verse 7. It says, For if the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for for the second. And what made the first covenant faultless? The Israelites were able to not uphold their end of it. Because the Heavenly Father was upholding his end to the T, even as he's doing right now. You know, even in regards to the curses, the Lord said, look, if you forsake this covenant, I'm going to forsake you and all these curses are going to come upon you. So clearly the Heavenly Father is doing his his part very well, you know. But the only thing that made a, a, a fault was that, you know, the Israelites weren't upholding their end like the Heavenly Father intended them to do. Because he didn't establish the covenant just to destroy the Israelites. He established the covenant to, to bring blessings upon the children of Abraham as the, the, the promises were to Abraham. And for his seed to flourish and to thrive in the earth. As it says in verse 8, Hebrews 8 and 8, for finding fault with them. So that's who the fault was with. For finding fault with them, the Israelites. He saith, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So clearly, like I said, for anyone to just pick up the Bible and think, oh, wow, God loves me. He has mercy towards me. He's going to deliver me. I'm going to be a part of his new covenant. I'm going to rule in the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to live forever. Look, you can't just pick up the book and just make it apply to you. You have to deal with what the text says. And the text says that the old covenant and the new covenant was with the house of Israel and was with the house of Judah. You know, and even this new covenant is a, it's a better covenant. It's one that can't be broken. It even says in Hebrews 8 and 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, said the Lord. So this is what we read in Isaiah 54, when the Lord said he forsook us. The Lord said, y'all forsook me, so I regarded you not, you know. But it says in verse 10, Hebrews 8 and 10, 
For this is the covenant that I, will, that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. So after, you know, we're done receiving the judgments for our transgressions. You know, once again, Jeremiah 30 and 7, Jacob's trouble. The Lord is going to remember his, his promise, his, his, you know, oath that he swore even unto his son. He's going to command his son, the Lord Yahweh Shai, to come and to, to deliver his elect, his chosen Israelites, whom he has established this better covenant through. And through them, the rest of the Israelites will, you know, be born into the kingdom as newborn babies. You know, for those of who can't receive that, as we read earlier, even to children's children. It's talking about the children of the elected Israelites. They're going to receive mercy, too. They're going to come back in their lot and they're going to receive the benefits of the covenant. It says Hebrews 8 and 10, continuing on. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel, not everybody of the earth, the house of Israel, where it was the word house, even when you get it in context, talking about the literal sea line, the family, right? The descendants, right? It's that word oikos, right? Strong's G, 3624, oikos, oikos. Right, oikos, it says a house, an inhabited house or home. But look, this is the point we jump on down. It says the inmates of a house are the persons forming one family. What one family is this? The family of Israel. It says a household, the family of God, of the Christian church, of the church of the Old and New Testaments. So the Christian church, we understand that the true Christians, the word Christian goes back to uh, uh, the anointed followers. You know, the followers of the anointed one, because that word Christ, which I don't really like, uh, goes back to the word Mashiach or Hamashiach, which means the anointed one. So the the Mashiach Yom, which means the anointed ones or Hamashiach Yom, the anointed ones, they follow the anointed, right? Which is the Lord Yahweh Shai. So all those who, as the scriptures call the Israel of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, they are those who are going to receive the the first fruit benefits of the new testament but they were also a part of the old testament already it says the stock the family the descendants of one you know which that goes back to abraham goes down to isaac and ends up at at israel and his his descendants the israelites you know it says continuing on i will put my laws into their mind and will write them in their hearts so the fringes that even though the israelites used to wear in the old covenant those fringes are going to be in their mind now. They're not going to have to look down and be reminded, oh, I got to keep this commandment. Oh, I got to make sure I do this commandment. Oh, I got to keep this law. No, the laws are going to be in their mind. It's going to be written in their hearts, that la'ab, their mind. And I will be to them a power, and they shall be to me a people. So once again, this is not talking about everybody. This is talking about how the Lord is going to establish the Israelites to be able to uphold their end of the bargain now. You see that? This is a better promise, a better covenant. So it's in verse 11, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Every Israelite, from the Lord Yahweh Shai, all the way down to the lowest, lowest two-third Israelite on this side in the kingdom, we're all going to know Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Right? As it says in verse 12, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. That's talking about that deliverance that is coming you know and even you know the two-thirds being able to come back in their lot in the kingdom that's mercy it says for i will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will i remember no more because the lord is going to remember them he remembers them now that's why jacob's trouble has to come to pass that's why the hour of temptation has to come to pass all the israelites who have been set up to take part in that thermonuclear fire you know to be melted here along with the rest of the enemies of yahweh shai they're gonna they have to go through that. You know, they have to be destroyed according to the words of the Lord, according to the, the spirit of prophecy. But yet and still, the Lord in his abundance of mercies, as as they are from everlasting to everlasting, the, the Israelites that do die on this side, having no faith, they're gonna be born in the kingdom as children. They're gonna be risen up in righteousness. You know, it says, and I'll end it uh, with verse 13 in Hebrews 8, Hebrews 8 and 13, and that he saith, a new covenant. He hath made the first old, now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Because we're living in the times where, you know, it, it is vanishing away, but it's not yet. It's still here. You know, in regards to we still have to keep and rehearse those righteous acts, you know, to, to show our faith, to show that, you know, we desire that new covenant where we'll actually be able to do this thing according to the 100% T, you know. So let's go back to Isaiah 53. Oh. 
Uh, I said 53. I'm players 57. Uh. I said Isaiah 53, um, 54. All right, yeah, here we go. Uh, and let's read verse 8 again. And like I said, we're going to read down to verse 10. Isaiah 54 and 8. In a little wrath, I hid my face from thee for a moment. But with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, said the Lord. Yahweh by Shemel shall thy Redeemer. And right, and how is the Lord hidden his face? A lot of the Israelites, majority of the Israelites, they can't understand this gospel. No matter what we say, no matter what we do, the words aren't the truth, but they're just, they just won't be able to get down with it. Their spirit won't allow them to. The Heavenly Father has not drawn them to his son to behold and to understand this word. You know, that's how the Lord is hidden himself. It says in verse 9, for this is as the waters, and it even talks about in the scriptures, that the God of this world has blinded the, the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine unto them, you know, and they be healed, loosely paraphrasing, you know. So, that once again, you know, y'all have preferred the ways of this world. Esau, Edom, uh, the circle of white men, women, and child, their religions, their philosophies, their land, America. Y'all love the American dream, you know, you, you're you fine with the way this world is. And if, even if you're not fine, you're not seeking the true and right, right way to correct it. You know, you like the shortcuts, you know, you like the, the easy way out, the you like the um the temporary happiness, the temporary pleasures. And that's why the Lord is going to give you that temporary peace. Because when these judgments start to roll out, you're going to see just how right, you know, the, the apostles, the men of the Lord were. Starting from the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, you know, on down. Those who teach and preach that same 100% truth. You're going to see just how right, you know, the men of the Lord were. And how wrong you are, you know. But it says in verse 9, Isaiah 54 and 9, For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, right, which is what the rainbow represents. And we still see rainbows to this day. So the Lord is upholding that promise. It says, So have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee nor rebuke thee. And once again, it's talking about the kingdom of heaven. Once we get into the kingdom, we're never going to go into captivity or bondage again. Because we're never going to know sin anymore. Those were judgments, you know, once we transgress the law, right? You can read all of that, all of the punishments for our transgressions in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, you know. Uh, I believe around verse 16, 15 or 16 on down, it, it lists all the curses if we're disobedient, you know. And that's exactly what we're up under right now, all the curses. And the Lord said he's sworn that it's going to come a time where... We're no longer going to have to be rebuked and the Lord is no longer going to be wroth with us. He's not going to be angry with us anymore, you know, because why? We're going to be performing all the laws that are written in our hearts. We're going to be completely obedient to, to his covenant, his promise, his laws, statutes, and commandments that he established, you know, for a testimony and for a law unto Jacob, you know, pursuant to Psalms 143, the, the, the latter two verses, I believe it's Psalms 143. Uh, let me just clarify that because you know I want to be as edifying as possible. Uh, Psalm chapter one forty. No, see, I'm glad the Lord allowed me to check that. Um, Psalms one. Let me just do this. Uh, Psalms. No, that's not it. Um. I know what to do. So I can bear me one one second, John. All right, yeah, Psalms 147. Okay, so it's a lot. Psalms 147, uh, verses 19 and 20. He showeth his word unto Jacob. And, and what is the word of the Heavenly Father? Chiefly, it's the Lord Yahweh Shah, the light. You know, for those of y'all who can't receive it, he showeth his word unto Jacob, that's the Israelites, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye, Yahweh Shemiel Shai. So once again, we understand this has only been set up for the Israelites to understand and to be saved and delivered, and even to have their kingdom established above all other nations in the earth, pursuant to Deuteronomy 7 and 6. You know, the promise that the Lord 
made with the Israelites to exalt them above all other people. You know, this is going to come to pass after the elect have, have been delivered and redeemed, you know, from the, the captivity that they have been made to serve from the from under the hands of their enemies pursuant to Luke uh, chapter one. You know, you know, they're going to be given this kingdom of peace as the Lord Yahweh Shai's title, you know, is the king of peace. You know, it uh, continuing on, though, Isaiah 54 and 10. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, referring to these nations and their governments. You know, they're going to be put out of rulership. Why? Because the rulership of the Israelites is coming to pass. It says, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed. Saith the Lord, Yahweh, Shai, that hath mercy on thee. So like the Lord said, although all these other nations and kingdoms, they got the rule and he took their rulership away. This time, guess what? When he sets up the Israelites under the Lord, Yahweh Shai, and Malak Dawada, King David, you know, which we do believe through the spirit was, you know, uh, King Masha, you know, for those of y'all who can't receive it, you know, it's all set up according to faith. You know, I haven't personally, I'll give my testimony. I personally haven't met him, but, you know, it's just through the spirit, you know, that the Lord has communed with me that I, I do truly believe that, you know, King Masha was coming back in his life, you know, as, as our king, you know, and he will return, you know, even... As our Lord Yahweh Shai returns, and he's going to be in his lot, you know, as the king of Israel, under the Lord Yahweh Shai, which is the king of kings, you know. But digressing from that, once again, as I said, the Lord is not going to remove his covenant of peace from the Israelites, and he is going to have mercy on us, and that's through his elect, the remnant, the, the residue remaining of the Israelites. Only the little bit of them that actually had this faith and believed towards the latter end of their salvation, you know. With that being said, let's jump to... Isaiah 63, and we're going to wrap it up with this. Isaiah chapter 63, and I want to get verse 7. All right. Let me see. All right, yeah. Uh, we'll read 7 and 8, and we'll wrap it up with this. Isaiah 63 and 7. I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, and the praises of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, according to all that the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, hath bestowed on us. Who is us? The same us, the same we, the same our that, that, that we've been mentioning before. The Israelites and their God, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, hath bestowed upon us. And the great goodness toward the house of Israel, which he hath bestowed on them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindness. So once again, all this is coming to pass because it was the heavenly father's will towards his children, towards them who he chose to, to, pour, up, to, to pour upon his mercy and his love. You know, once again, it's always been his chosen, the Israelites, which the, the name Israel in itself, Yashar Allah, which means uh, Yah meaning he, Shar meaning prince, and Allah meaning power. He uh, he prince of the power, you know, or another alternative way of saying the sons of God, you know. We understand that the Israelites were chosen to be the Heavenly Father's people, you know, and that's never changed. It's never going to change, you know. Otherwise, the Heavenly Father would be a liar, and anyone who calls the Heavenly Father a, li a liar. We understand that you're just an enemy of the gospel. You know, you're just an anti-Mashiach, an anti-Messiah, you know. Uh, you're against our God and even us, you know. But it's not going to stop anything. You're just fulfilling your lot, fulfilling your role, your position, your duty in, in the grand scheme of things. You're not stopping the prophecy. If anything, you're fulfilling the prophecy. Because <laughs> the scriptures all throughout the Bible, there's always been non-believers and enemies of the purpose of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh So this is nothing new. You know, it says Isaiah 63 and 8. For he said, surely, which means for a fact, they are my people, children that will not lie. So he was their savior. You know, and as the scriptures say, the elect will be able to stand before the throne with no guile in their mouth. You know, which got the word guile going into deceit or lies. You know, why? Because they've been changed, transfigured, you know, even within the twinkling of an eye, they've been conformed to the image of Yahweh's only begotten son, their Lord Yahweh Shai. And, the, you know, they have been found before him in love and even in grace. And through his mercy, once again, he has become their savior and he's going to establish 
their kingdom for them, you know. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up and end it. Operatis I, Lord willing, this is edifying to the sincere, hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Till next time, Achim and Achwath. I'm going to end it by saying Shalom and by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachah, Quraish, Wa Abad Babal, Death to America.